My dear friends, I will never forget this case because after performing the fake emulsification, my handpiece simply packed up. This was a very hard cataract, at least a grade 6 nucleosclerotic cataract, and I'm trying to manage this by FECO emulsification. The anterior capsule is stained with tripen blue, and a clear corneal incision is carefully crafted. The patient was an 85 year old lady who had advanced nuclear cataracts in both eyes. In this patient, I used only hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose 2% for the entire surgery in order to coat the epithelium as well as the endothelium. The anterior capsule of flap was quite easily manageable and a careful capsulorexis is attempted. I'm trying to make a capsulorexis opening of at least 5.5 millimeters or slightly larger. However, I end up with a much smaller capsulorexis than I intended. And therefore, I decide that I, I would enlarge this capsular axis and make a nick at 5 o'clock position and using the Inamura uh, forceps, the capsular axis is enlarged slightly to give me a rexis size of about 5.5 millimeters. A slightly larger capsular rexis is important to be able to mobilize the nucleus fragments, which would, I think, be a little large in this case. Central cortical cleavage hydrodissection is done. We need to inject very small amounts of fluid and it's very easy to break the corticocapsular adhesions in such cases. Now FACO emulsification is now being attempted with the direct chop method. I'm using the multi-burst mode of FACO emulsification with a power of 50%, a burst duration of 30 milliseconds and a duty cycle of 80%. So the first job has not gone through and through, I succeed only in cracking the superficial part of the lens. Then I realized this cataract is much harder than I anticipated. In order to get a proper and good hold, I need to bury the tip deep into the substance of the nucleus. So once I have buried it to the sufficient depth and I am able to hold the lens with a certain amount of suction then it's easy for me to crack this nucleus and once I create the crack I'm able to carry it down through and through throughout its entire extent and I also successfully manage to split the posterior plate of the lens. Now once having broken up this nucleus into sufficient amount of smaller pieces. I remove each of these small pieces by bringing it to the center and emulsifying it in the multiburst mode of FACO emulsification. Note that a dispersive viscoelastic like uh, viscoat or chondritin sulfate is not used in this case and I'm using simple methyl cellulose only. And if you stick to the fact that you break the nucleus into small pieces and emulsify it in the center, you can get by with sufficient amount of endothelial protection and safety.
the rotation of the nucleus should be done very slowly because excess pressure can easily produce zonular dialysis. The zonules tend to be weak in these cases. The posterior capsule also tends to rise up or trampoline because it is stretched and it is thin. Before mobilizing the fragments, you have to make sure that the crack that you've created has gone through and through and you have separated the nucleus fragments in its entirety. Once you have separated a small fragment from the main chunk of the nucleus, this fragment is then gently vacoemulsified. At this point, I take a break and I insufflate for the methyl cellulose, which is a viscous agent, but which has dispersive properties and will coat the endothelium much better than sodium hyaluronate. But it's less effective than chondroitin sulfate because chondroitin sulfate tends to stick to the endothelium, whereas methyl cellulose will not. But methyl cellulose will not be aspirated en masse like the sodium hyaluronate and therefore tends to stay longer within the anterior chamber. So each of this nucleus fragment is carefully separated. You have to take a firm hold of the nucleus and this can be done by driving the phaco tip into the nucleus with high vacuum. The vacuum that is being used in this case is 350 millimeters of mercury in a venturi machine. The bottle height is kept at 100 centimeters from the patient's eye. The balanced salt solution is used for the case and not Hartmann's ringer lactate solution. The phaco emulsification is done, making sure that the power is activated only after you have achieved good tip occlusion with the nucleus fragment. This will ensure that the phaco power is delivered into the nucleus. We are now moving towards the final pieces of the nucleus, so once again a top up with 2% methyl cellulose. Actually, I do not reduce the settings for the last piece. This is simply because I have something called as a dual linear foot pedal system where I can reduce the vacuum on the fly for the same phaco power. So once the nucleus is emulsified, you see a thick inspissated cortex cum epinucleus shell which is removed with the irrigation aspiration probe. This can also be removed with the phaco probe but given the fact that the posterior capsule would be thin then I prefer to remove it with the IA probe because it offers me a certain level of safety. You see the nucleus fragment that is stuck to the phaco tip. Normally, we'll try to crush it and remove it, but all you have to do is hold it high vacuum and simply pull it out. Or yank it out, it will come. It will save you time to remove these fragments. Of course, this will work only if the fragment is small. And finally, a hydrophobic acrylic single piece intraocular lens is injected within the capsular bag. The whole procedure in a very hard cataract has been done just with the direct phaco chop technique and using only methyl cellulose. Mm -hmm. 
After washing out all the viscoelastic, the clear corneal incision is secured and the case is completed. Now this patient was operated on a Saturday and was seen by my resident on Sunday who had put down the notes as saying that the cornea had mild central SK. However, when I saw the patient on Monday morning, this is what I found. The cornea was crystal clear. There was no anterior chamber inflammation. The unaided visual acuity was 6x9, improving with pinhole to 6x6. The only problem I had with this case was when I tuned the FACO handpiece to perform the next case, I found that the handpiece had died. Maybe it was just coincidence, maybe it was a fact that the crystals just could not handle this grade 6 nucleosclerotic cataract. Thank you for your attention.